SpaceX has been trying to make Starship as reusable as the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, but it hasn't been easy. While they've managed to successfully land the booster using the massive Mechazilla Tower, the company's long-term plan involves launching dozens of Starships every year. And that's where the problem starts. Mechazilla can't handle that many recoveries on its own, so SpaceX is now coming up with a completely new and unique way to recover Starship. Surprisingly, one of the reasons behind this challenge actually ties back to the California government. You might be wondering, what does California have to do with any of this? Well, we're going to break it all down. From the infrastructure issues to the regulatory hurdles SpaceX is facing. But before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future updates about SpaceX. SpaceX today has one of the largest and most advanced infrastructures in the entire space sector. The company started in California, where its main headquarters and early rocket production facilities were based. For a long time, Musk planned to keep growing there, even exploring potential expansion near the port of Los Angeles to build larger rockets. But as SpaceX grew, California started to feel too restrictive. The state's high taxes and slow permitting process made it difficult to expand quickly. SpaceX had plans to build bigger factories and test areas near the West Coast, but every time they tried to scale, they ran into bureaucratic delays. Around 2020, things started heating up politically. Musk began clashing with California officials over COVID-19 shutdowns, which had temporarily halted SpaceX and Tesla operations. He publicly criticized the state's leadership for what he saw as overregulation. That's when he made a decisive move to shift his focus toward Texas and Florida. Florida has always been America's gateway to space. From the Apollo missions to modern-day Falcon launches, Cape Canaveral has seen it all. SpaceX now wants to make it the home of Starship's future. The company has plans for an incredibly ambitious flight schedule. Up to 44 Starship launches a year from Launch Complex 39A and as many as 76 from Space Launch Complex 37. If they pull that off, it would be the busiest launch operation by a single rocket family in history. But launching that often creates its own problems. Even with two pads, managing that kind of turnaround is a nightmare. Musk has compared it to airport traffic control for rockets. To handle the growing demand, SpaceX is building new towers, transport lines, and refueling systems in Florida. The iconic Mechazilla launch tower, the one designed to catch returning boosters, is being duplicated and upgraded to support multiple Starship variants. Still, even with these expansions, the company realized there's only so much you can do on land. That's why they began seriously considering ocean landings for Starship's super heavy booster. The idea is simple. If the rocket can't make it back to the launch pad, it lands safely at sea. It's the same logic SpaceX has used for years with Falcon 9. But now it's being applied on a much bigger scale. The difference is that while Falcon 9's ocean landings are already routine, doing the same with Starship is going to be a lot more complex. With Falcon 9, the process is almost second nature by now. The first stage of the Falcon 9 is about 3.7 meters wide and weighs around 25 tons when empty. It has nine Merlin engines and takes off with about 770 tons of thrust. For landing, it reignites just one engine to slow down before touching down on a drone ship in the ocean. These drone ships are massive barges, roughly 90 meters long and 30 meters wide, with powerful engines that keep them perfectly still even when the sea is rough. Falcon 9 has landed successfully on these platforms more than 150 times, with a success rate above 95%. But Starship's booster, called Super Heavy, is in another league entirely. It's over twice as wide, 9 meters across, and carries 33 Raptor engines. Together, they produce around 7,500 tons of thrust at launch, about 10 times more than Falcon 9. Even though it will only use a few engines for landing, the heat and force during descent will be far greater than anything SpaceX has managed before. 
To handle this, the company needs a completely new kind of drone ship, one that's much larger, stronger, and capable of staying stable while a rocket the size of a skyscraper lands on it. The Falcon 9's drone ships already use advanced GPS-based positioning systems that keep them locked within about three meters of their target position, even in rough seas. For Starship, that precision will need to be even tighter, probably within one to two meters because the super-heavy booster is nearly ten times heavier. A slight offset in positioning could cause the booster to miss its landing clamp or tilt on touchdown. To handle this, SpaceX's next-generation drone ships will need more powerful electric thrusters, possibly producing around 2,000 horsepower each compared to the 1,200 horsepower units on the current Falcon 9 drone ships. The landing deck itself will also have to be completely redesigned. A Falcon 9 drone ship's deck area is about 90 by 50 meters, enough for a 3.7-meter rocket with comfortable clearance. Super Heavy's 9-meter width and wider exhaust spread mean the deck will likely need to be over 120 meters long and 80 meters wide, with a heat-resistant steel surface and an active water deluge system capable of dumping up to 1,000 gallons per minute to absorb the landing heat. The Raptors used on Starship burn liquid methane and oxygen, producing hotter and more transparent flames than Falcon 9's kerosene-fueled Merlin engines. Methane combustion reaches roughly 3,500 degrees Celsius, nearly 800 degrees hotter than kerosene. That means any misdirected plume could easily melt or deform unprotected steel, so the drone ship will require thick armor plating and active cooling beneath the landing area. When a Falcon 9 lands, it descends at about 2 meters per second, using a single Merlin engine throttled to 30 to 40 percent power, generating around 200 kilonewtons of thrust at touchdown. Once the legs lock, the onboard Octagrabber robot slides underneath and clamps the rocket to the deck. The entire process takes less than a minute, but Super Heavy is a different story. It won't use landing legs at all. Adding them would cost several tons of payload and complicate recovery. Instead, it's expected to use four hardpoint latches built into its interstage section which will automatically lock into mechanical clamps on the ship. The clamps will likely engage within five seconds of touchdown, securing the 3,500-ton booster before C-Motion can shift it. So can SpaceX really make all this work? Technically, yes, but it will push the limits of engineering precision. The Super Heavy Booster's landing burn will likely involve three center Raptor engines throttled to about 40% of their 230-ton thrust each, providing just enough power to decelerate without creating uncontrollable turbulence. FAA documents confirm that SpaceX has already proposed landing Starship in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, depending on the flight path. Of course, these ocean landings aren't happening yet. SpaceX is still testing and improving Starship before attempting anything like that. Just a few weeks ago, the company completed Starship's 10th flight, and now they're preparing for Flight 11, expected in mid-October 2025. This mission won't include a sea landing attempt. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.